Hello everybody, I'm DV in Film Work, obviously. It hasn't been a long while since the last update, but you know, I got a few more things. So I got four Blu-rays, two DVDs, and three VHS tapes. So I might as well just get started. First one is Blu-rays is Train Spotting. This is warning. This one has absolutely nothing to do with trains. It's basically about heroin junkies in um, Edinburgh, I think. Yeah, it's quite Scotland. So. Yeah, but it's a very, very good film. You know, very. Actually, you know, it's a brilliant film. It's very. You know, like it can get quite disturbing. It's. It it has its elements of humour and. You know, like it can get very psychedelic, and it's got many iconic moments like right there. The worst toilet in Scotland moment, which is probably the most iconic moment in the film. Um, so, that's what I, I like the design on the Channel 4 DVDs and Blu rays where they put the design um, landscape wise as opposed to portraying, which is pretty cool. And there's the disc itself. Next one is next one is a semi sort of box that was a set and that is the Robocop trilogy. I've seen I've watched all three of them Abs the first one absolutely brilliant. I can't bore first Robocop film, you know, it's if you're into like eighties action and Zaka films, you must have seen Robocop at some point. You know, it's violent as hell and everything. And it kind of it's one of those you mean I can like the fake commercials and things. Robocop 2, it's okay. Robocop 3, bad. It wasn't very good. It was far too weak in the fact that obviously Peter Weller didn't return. Robocop 3. But anyway, he does the song. This is the re release with the remastered version of Robocop on it because I believe on many of the earlier Blu ray releases of Robocop, you know, they do suffer quite a bit, you know, from. Different types of films and things. This is the 4K remaster. Don't take that as it would look great on a 4K TV, you know, because it's because they remastered it in 4K, but they had to downscale it to 1080p, so it, so it goes so it can fit on a Blu-ray disc. But you know, it still was brilliant. And um, but the only sort of problem with the transfer is the fact that it, the film stop does get quite consistent when you go between the unrated director's cut footage and the R-rated footage, but that's not too bad from Robocop, Robocop 2 and Robocop 3. Next one is, next one is Quentin Tarantino film, Inglourious Bastards. Bizarrely when they, when, when they um, did a few advertisements for the film in this country they Remove the word bastards from the title and just called it Inglorious. But anyway, this is a great film. It's, it can get a bit slow at times, but you know, it's still fairly enjoyable film. You know, black comedy set during the uh, Second World War. <clears throat> and that's Inglorious Bastards. Great film. You yeah, know, what's interesting about Inglorious Bastards is the fact that. Hmm, is the fact that less than about a third of the movie is actually in English, you know, most of it's in like German, French, Italian and things, which is pretty cool. Final one is, final Blu-ray is Groundhog Day, Bill Murray and Andy McDowell. I've not seen Groundhog Day. I've not watched Groundhog Day yet, but I've heard good things about it. You know, about this guy played by Bill Murray, who's basically, who basically is stuck having to live a one day of his life, you know, for ages. You know, <laughs> no, one particular day of his life keeps repeating. Anyway, this is part of the Sony Collectors the series. I've got a few of the Sony Collectors ones with the sort of cover and things. Cover and release are actually identical. There's the disc. And there's a little pamphlet which I've got on all of them. 
advertising some of the tiles and the image inside to the film. Okay, so we move on to the two DVDs. Um, first one is first one is the usual suspects. Now, this is from which I've heard some good things about. I, I watched it and I need to rewatch it actually because I didn't think much of it when I first saw it. I just it's very forgettable. I just kind of watched it once and kind of forgot about it. But I do need to revisit it. Yeah, but it did have its good elements in it. I picked this up at a motor show, you know, you know when they drive the cars and things. You know, on occasion they would, some people would sell like non-car related things, and I like toys and you know VHS DVDs and things. And I got this DVD and the VHS tapes from the motor show, and also at the same motor show I also got Wizard of Oz as well from the VHS of that. But that was last year, so that is the usual suspects. I like the design of this though, you know where they make it like a um, coffee solid. And then the final DVD is the Doctor Who one. I've not shown any do new Doctor Who ones in any of the previous updates. And that is The Face of Evil. This, this one's have um, Louise Jameson in it as Weaver. No. Yeah, so that's this one. It's Tom Baker one, obviously. Now we move on to the final three, which are the VHSs. So the first one is Pamela Louise, classic um, Ridley Scott film. I've not seen it before, but I've heard good things about it. By um, Ridley Scott, and it's got, I believe it's got a Mojave Cartel in it as well, who um, been a couple of Tarantino, a couple of Scorsese films as well. That's the tape. The um, text seems to be fading on it, which is a bit of a shame, but you know the everything's fine. And the final two are tapes which I, which you know, come on, kind of mixed about on when I got them. And I'm kind of disappointed by them, but at the same time, kind of cool but disappointing. Anyway, those being Star, that being Star Wars. That's the original Star Wars before George Lucas went and fucked it in the ass with the special editions and things. It's the original version in widescreen. This is my first widescreen tape. Yeah, it's a brilliant film. Star Wars, if you've not seen it, one of the best. This tape, unfortunately, it doesn't work properly. It, um, I tried it in and it kept playing up, and which was a damn shame. I, I was kind of upset by it, you know, it was similar to the next step I was showing you, but I think the problem. I think the reason why it's playing up, you know, come on, it's like damaged and everything, is because, well, broadly speaking, Star Wars is a kid's film. I mean, I'm not trying to say, you know, like it's just stereotypical kids, adults shouldn't like it or anything, but it's one of the films where it's kind of aimed at, you know, like a younger audience, and the fact that the person selling it, you know, had like some Disney titles and things, so I'm assuming he, he had kids and he, or she, I can't remember had kids and they probably had it and they probably watched it a lot so it might have to go in the bin unfortunately but I've but I've found but you know I'm going to try and keep it see if I can find the other ones and maybe try and find the DVD versions that had the original and altered trilogy on them which are rare to find their ends teeth anyway this one has a print date on it of the 14th of September 1995. The inside's quite cool though. We get a advert for the Star Wars Radio show and the couple of alternative poster designs, including one from uh, Japan or China, I don't know. 
Then I forgot to mention Family Louise has a print day as well, being the 13th of May in 1993. The final one is The Empire Strikes Back. Um, I couldn't find, they didn't have Return of the Jedi, which I was kind of bummed about until I tried these, and then, then yeah, come on, I'm not really that bummed anymore because it doesn't work properly still. But that's Empire Strikes Back. Back. This is, unfortunately isn't the widescreen copy, it's a pan and scan release, which is kind of a shame because it's the, it's the original trilogy in my opinion. And unfortunately this one doesn't work either because when I popped it in, it, when it was when I first popped it in, it kept, you know, when it was tracking, the, the image kept jumping and, you know, you could hear like the audio just sort of doing something like that. And then eventually it just froze, just it froze on a single image and it, and you know, it wouldn't, advance forward, it wouldn't advance backwards, it wouldn't do anything, it was just stuck on one image and every time I kept popping it in the video course to see if it would you know, quite budge a little bit, you know, it just kept doing the same thing and oh, it was really fucking shame because oh, I've got a couple of tapes like that actually where they just freeze on one image, like I think I had um, Thomas the Magic Railroad on VHS when I was a kid and that one had that problem as well and so I don't get what the hell is up with it, because I mean, the tape looks fine, I'll just show you. Um, yeah, tape, tape, tape is a tiny bit, you know, like what, but you know, come on, I've had tapes that look similar and they work fine, so I don't get what the hell is Empire's problem as to why it's not working. Maybe my video recorder doesn't like it, you know, there is that possibility because they are very picky bits of equipment some video recorders like certain tapes some don't you know it it happens but inside anyway we're just getting out of it for other fox titles including the star wars trilogy okay. um just let you know with um family louise when i got this um i had a look at the um it wasn't re round when I got it, although obviously I re round it, you know, when I took it home. And um, it had a tiny bit of dirt on the tape. It was just like near the bottom. It was a tiny bit, but I'm just praying that it doesn't freeze. I'm just praying that it just has a bit of interference on the screen. That's it. It continues. I'm... It's one of those things in a way I always have that thing in the back of my throat that, you know, when tapes aren't re round all the way. Because, in my opinion, if a tape's not re round all the way, because of my experiences, it's usually, I've raised a few red flags because um, I'm, if it takes me round then it's fine with the exception of the Star Wars one, you know, where that was me round and that still was playing up and um, or if it's the film's like finished and there's barely any tape on the take up reel, you know, then that's fine, you know, that obviously suggests that they were lazy sod, the owner but it's one of the things, you know, where if it's in the middle of the film then a few red flags can be raised up, unfortunately, because some of them it might have froze, or seized up in their video recorder, and then they just, and then they just chopped it in the box, didn't chuck it away, and then forgot about it, and then eventually they got around to selling it. In most cases, it's probably just because the previous owner was watching the film, they had to be called off or something, so they took it out of the video recorder and. And they forgot about it, and then they eventually, a few years later, got rid of their video recorder and then sold their tapes. But anyway, that was. Well, that's just my little bit of advice. It's probably complete rubbish, but you know, it's just one of those things. Anyway, that was. That was my VHS, DVD, and Blu ray update for. Oh, I don't get. I don't know what the fuck the month is. Uh, June, yeah, June. So, so I'll see you all next time and. Oh yeah, and also I forgot to mention what was cool about Usual Suspects right here was um, when I got it at the Met Show, um, it was from the same person who was selling Grandma Louise, and it was about I think there were about fifty people each. I think. <coughs> The Star Wars ones were about a pound each, and the one thing that was cool about um, Usual Suspects is usually when I'm buying like second hand DVDs and things, I'd usually check to make sure you know they're not scratched or anything, because if they're scratched, then 
then you know then you know you've just wasted your money with um but with some like dvds and some vhs sets you can't properly check them unless you've got a video recorder with you or dvd player with you um but was what was cool about this one the usual suspects was it was still in its shrink wrap it still had a shrink wrap on it which was pretty cool um, the cover doesn't smell exactly new, you know, come it does smell a bit old, but you know. But you know, come on, I mean, the disc was fine, it wasn't scratch, it wasn't marked, wasn't any dust, dirt, whatever. It was, it was fine, it was perfectly fine. I'll see you all next time.